Today, we're going to learn how to exploit misconfigured versions of sudo using an open source tool called sudokiller on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Sudo is a fundamental tool for nearly all Linux computers. For the uninitiated, sudo is a piece of software written for Unix systems, which allows one user to run with the privileges of a different user, typically as a super user. This allows the person using the computer to correctly install programs or configure with restricted files onto, on the computer. However, if a hacker is able to exploit a misconfigured version of sudo, then they're able to gain essentially root access to the computer, gaining complete control over the device. Typically, a misconfigured version of sudo just means an outdated version of sudo, which is why it's always important to remember your updates and your upgrades. Today, we're going to do a quick demonstration of sudo killer and use it to show just how easily a hacker can exploit a misconfigured version of sudo. In order to follow this tutorial, all you're going to need is a Unix computer in order to test sudo killer on. And remember, if you have any problems following this video tutorial, check out the article, which is linked in the description. Let's get started. So to go ahead and get using sudo killer, we're going to actually have to install the program onto our computer. So to go ahead and do that, we can just navigate to the mobile article and you can find this linked in the description. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can find the exact GitHub link to clone. If not, you can always just Google sudo killer and it's going to be one of the first things that come up and you can just clone it from here as well. So we go ahead and copy this link and we can open up a terminal window. And if we navigate to a directory of our choosing, which I'm already in, I can go ahead and clone this link or this GitHub repository rather. And then now once we're in here, we'll have a pseudo killer folder. And there's a bunch of different files in here that we can play around with. The sudo killer v2.0.3.sh is the actual sudo killer file, which does all the heavy lifting for us. So we can go ahead and try running that. And you might note that it's not going to do anything at first. This is because we actually have to download some update files that contain various vulnerabilities that um, sudo killer will look out for. So let's go ahead and we can use the CVE update 2sh bash script. And this is basically going to download a bunch of CVEs that uh, are specifically related to sudo that sudo killer will then use. So first we have to give it execute privileges, so we'll just use chmod. And now we can go ahead and run that script. Oops, I shouldn't have used a capital X. In the Linux case is uh, important for everything, unlike Windows. And this is gonna take um, about a minute to update all these files. Okay, now that that's finished, we can go ahead and use sudo killer on our own computer to make sure that our own computer is up to snuff and isn't vulnerable to any uh, sudo exploits. So let's go ahead and run the main script. And it's actually not going to do anything unless you run a sudo yourself because my machine is properly configured. But as we'll find, not all machines are properly configured and sudo killer will be able to do its thing without super user privileges. So just because this is my own computer, I am going to have to run that as sudo, but it might not be true for a machine that is trying to be exploited and it might not be true for your own machine. And then now it's going to go ahead and do a complete scan um, looking for any possible way to exploit sudo. And it is possible to run sudo without a password. Uh, let's see. It tells you what uh, accounts have recently run sudo and it's going to say Nick because that is me. Um, I am the only user on this computer and also the one in, found in the sudo group. Looked for common sudo misconfigurations what wasn't, and when none were found. Um, and nothing else too interesting and it looks like my, um, it ran this as root as you can see. Um, but nothing that interesting because my machine is properly configured and I make sure that it's not vulnerable to things like that. So now let's go ahead and demonstrate pseudo killer on a more vulnerable machine. And in this case, I'm going to be using a Meta Metasploitable 2 virtual machine that I have running right here. So first things first, um, I'm just going to be acting like this is a different computer on my own local network, which for all intents and purposes, it is acting like a different computer on my own local network. So first we have to actually transfer this pseudo killer file. We have to transfer the pseudo killer um, script 
and we have to transfer the update files that we just downloaded to it. So the easiest way to do all this is to actually just create a, an archive. So let's navigate to the folder above us and let's zip all this together using tar. And we're gonna the name of the folder that we're actually zipping. Now we can see this is all zipped up nicely for us. And this is assuming, our, of course, like most other exploits that we show on this YouTube channel, this is already assuming that you're able to get onto that computer some, one way or another, whether that was just brute forcing that system's password, whether that was using command injection, or using rubber ducky create a backdoor, which are also various methods which we have also covered on this YouTube channel. So this is assuming that I already have a reverse shell into that computer, or a way to access that computer directly. So for this case, I'm just gonna create a simple HTTP server. And I'm gonna be serving that HTTP server on the default port of 8000. So now let's go ahead and switch over to this virtual machine that I somehow have access to, which is not very important for the purposes of pseudo killer. So now that I'm on the Metasploitable machine, let's actually go ahead and download the pseudo killer folder. So to do that, we're just gonna to have to um, use a simple wget command. We're gonna use, it's an HTTP server. And my local IP address is 68. Dot on port 1000. And we're gonna wanna make sure we remember the name of the file, which I forgot to do. Um, pseudokiller.tar.gz. So let's go ahead and download that. Okay, and now we have that folder. And let's go ahead and extract this folder. And now, as we can see, we have, oh, we're not gonna navigate there. We have the same pseudo killer folder that we had on our home machine, but now it's on the machine that we're trying to exploit. And because this is Metasploitable 2, when we run the script the same way we did earlier, much more interesting things are probably gonna pop up. So let's see. It tells us the version of pseudo that is being used. It tells us various options that we can run sudo with, without a password. So we can use tac h, tac capital K, tac little, K, tac little case K, tac L, tac V, and we can run those all without a different password. And it tells us exactly how we can use those commands. Um, it tells us what accounts, similarly to our, our home computer, what accounts have used sudo successfully. And yeah, this is just a, a simple demonstration of how to use sudo killer to both identify and make sure and verify that your own machine is safe to pseudo exploits, but to also how a hacker could use it on your own computer and identify a misconfigured version of pseudo. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. As we just saw, if a computer has a misconfigured or outdated version of sudo, a hacker can use sudo killer to identify and exploit that almost instantly. That's why it's important to make sure that your version of sudo is always up to date and always perform your updates and upgrades regularly. Additionally, sudo killer can be useful even if you don't have any malicious intention with it. You can install it on your own computer and make sure that your version of sudo is up to date and not exploitable. Again, if you had any problems with this tutorial, check out the article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for a future episode, hit me up on Twitter at Nick Godshell. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.